Folks, this is kind of a peculiar little experiment that I've done here. Um, so I'm going to explain to you what this video is. You're going to see it looks kind of choppy. And the reason why is it is a sequence of photos that I shot with my new GoPro Hero 3 Plus. I had it set to shoot a photo every half second. So every 0.5 seconds it shoots a picture. And right now I'm just getting in my truck and getting ready to drive. Now, why did I do a video like this and put it on YouTube? Well, these are photos that are shot at 4,000 pixels wide by 3,000 pixels tall. And uh, usually I'm trying to do a, like a 30 frame per second, 48 frame per second, some kind of thing that shows real smooth motion. But I wanted to see just what would, you know, usually if you're doing something that's 30 frames per second and you're rendering it out to, you know, let's say 18 or 24 megs per second, it's still having to cut each one of those frames down to a certain size. Let's say you're, let's say you're doing 24 frames per second, you're doing 20, uh, 24 megs, you got one meg per picture, right? Well, if you slow that whole thing down, then I'm just checking to see, does YouTube render it out better? These are actually photos, and uh, so I'm going to narrate kind of what I'm doing there. I'm headed toward my mom and dad's house. This is uh, in Little Switzerland, headed up that way. But I want to see if you stop. I, want, I challenge you to stop on any frame and see if you have any artifacts or if it actually looks really nice since YouTube is not having to render out just a whole lot of extra data. Uh, I mean, it's still having to split it into however many frames. I think I did this at 24 megs per second. But, uh, but even at that, it's not changing constantly. You get a lot of artifacts and stuff when you've got thousands of leaves and YouTube is having to render that out. So that's what's going on here. Um, so this is an experiment. Hopefully what you'll be able to do is stop on any frame and you're actually looking at a really cool photo of something. The second thing I hope to uh, achieve with this was just to see how well does the uh, Hero 3 Plus shoot photos. So see, I'm on a dark side of a place of a, a mountain here headed toward Little Switzerland, coming into some light here. And I wanted to see just how does it change? You know, how does it reset its white balance? Does it pick up the colors really well? The GoPro was mounted on the outside of an F-150, actually to the top of my windshield. So it's uh, there's nothing between the glass or the lens and the real world. This is actually what the photos look like. Now I've rendered it down to 1080p, so it's uh, 1920 wide by 1080 tall. But at 4,000 wide by 3,000 tall, I'm telling you, they looked really nice. So this is just the video representation of that. I'm actually headed south on the Blue Ridge Parkway here from where the Mineral and Gem uh, Museum is, kind of at the, the intersection of Highway 226, or maybe I think it's 226, and uh, and and uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway. So I, I got on there at the Mineral Museum and I'm heading south kind of toward Asheville. This is Lynn Gap here. There's all these different gaps and um, I actually lived in a place called Deer Lick Gap growing up which is about three miles from this place we're at here. And uh, at this point we're moving on toward the getting close to the Little Switzerland Tunnel. So we'll be seeing that just in a moment. This is a really beautiful, scenic, kind of magic place that I grew up. Um, I was here from about the time I turned, I guess, six, you know, till, um, till I was, went, to, went off to college. And then uh, for a short period, came back after college, lived for about three and a half years and worked for a community college called Mayland Community College up in Spruce Pine. There's the tunnel, Little Switzerland Tunnel. It's maybe a little more than 100 yards long. So, you know, this is, I know what it's going to do. It's going to flare out here in a minute. Uh, the light gets real weird when you get inside the tunnel. The GoPro's trying to resolve what's going on. I did turn my lights on my truck so you can see the sides of the tunnel. When you come out this side here, you're in Little Switzerland, and these rocks that you see here on the, on the side when you come out, if you're ever up in this area in the winter, it's absolutely beautiful, the ice that hangs off those. We're talking about... Uh, icicles 10 12 feet long that form off the side off the side of that tunnel the area we're coming to here is, is the junction with 226a you just saw that and it's a place called swiss village it actually is little switzerland and the, some of the shops and things for the swiss village is on the left there you just saw them. this place is called the chalet motor lodge uh, i don't have them go wide enough where you can see the rest of it but it's actually a real nice place to stay the switzerland in Switzerland in now, it used to be called the Chalet Motor Lodge. This little intersection here, you go left, you go back around the side of the mountain from whence we came, you go to right, you go up where the uh, 
mines are where you can mine for gems and stuff and it's actually a pretty cool place this road here goes down by the post office and heads for Barrawalla Gap Road which is uh, the way you go up to my mom and dad's elevation here should be something around 3200 feet somewhere along in there you're up fairly high and believe it or not it gets pretty cold Little Switzerland's kind of a harsh place to live this road we're going around here is Barrawalla Gap Road and it gets very precipitous in places where it just kind of falls off to the left. There's some spots where if you lose control of your car, you'll fall into the next county. Uh, so this is a, a road that, you know, I try to be very careful on. I used to drive it way too fast when I was a kid. My brothers tried to scare the life out of me on this road a while back. And, you know, they, you, if you know what you're doing, you can hit about 60 or 70 on this road, which sounds insane. You know, look off to the left. I, I promise you, you'll fall to your death if you go off that side there. All those caution things there. And there's no room to even put a uh, a, a rail up. Some, you know, some places, a few places here a little while a little while later, you'll see where there are some, some rail areas there for protection. Looks like right here is one of them. There's just not much land to the side of the road. And lots of uh, old weathered Appalachian rock there to the right. And a lot of times it'll fall off. Those trees were broken a lot of them. There was a huge ice storm about four or five years ago that just broke the tops off all the trees. I mean it was a mess through this area. I've got some video of it somewhere. I'll have to post it. So here we are coming uh, close to Barawala. This guy that lives in his house here has a beautiful view. I'm telling you it's awesome. Wish I could turn the camera left there and show you. But right here there's an underpass that goes back under the Blue Ridge Parkway here. That's what's called Osborne Knob, that road there that goes to the left. You go straight ahead. This is the underpass. That's the parkway going across the top. You're actually going from McDowell to Mitchell County here. And so now you're in Mitchell County and you just crossed the Barrawalla Gap. I don't know who names these places. Like I say, there are all kinds of gaps. There's Gooch Gap, Barrawalla Gap. I came from Deerlick Gap. And all they are are spots where you can cross the mountain easily. Uh, the Appalachians you know, can be imposing, so these people found these gaps where they could, I guess, get their animals, their mules and stuff up through them and, and named those places. This is a very uh, ongoing curve here. <laughs> and so when you're going around that one, it's, you have to go about 25 miles an hour. You can't. This is another big steep curve here, too. We're actually coming into the area now that if you looked on your uh, Google map, you find an area called Strawberry Ridge. So Strawberry Ridge Road will be here to the right just in a second. And up on that hill to the right, if you climb that mountain, there's actually an airstrip up there. And it's beautiful. Right there's the road, Strawberry Ridge Road. And uh, quite a nice place. A lot of pretty houses, cabins and stuff up in that area. At this point, um, even though this is, uh, well, this, this is now what they call Crabtree Creek Road, there's a creek that runs off to the right and the left that goes under the road here at this point, right where we're there at that, right there you can see a bit of it. That's called Crabtree Creek, so we're at Upper Crabtree. Crabtree Creek has more tributaries and it eventually becomes a pretty good sized creek and a big waterfall uh, comes off of it. This little church on the right here, just in a second, is Black Mountain Baptist Church where I went to church when I was a kid and I actually pulled my truck in there for a second just to let it take a few pictures of it. So my, my family still goes to church there, most of them. Black Mountain Baptist Church reading is called Black Mountain. That, those mountains in the far distance there that are grayed out, those are the Black Mountains. So you got a little view through that gap of the Black Mountains. Actually, Mount Celo you can see there as you're coming uh, through this hole. So we're kind of on the home stretch toward my mom and dad's property at this point. And I know this has been probably very unusual for y'all to watch something like this. You're going, I don't know. I don't know if I dig this or not. But once again, I'm just trying to go for total clarity, see what kind of photos the Hero 3 will shoot, and uh, how will they translate? Would it, can you make an engaging video out of photos? And uh, so you've gone a little journey here, uh, two frames per second. There we are, Deer Lick Road. So this is headed down to my mom and dad's house. A lot of rhododendrons left and right on the uh, through here. It's beautiful when they start blooming, and usually it's June up in the Appalachians. And this is my my uncle's house, this little white one. And I stop here to 
talk with my brother just for a second at my uncle's house. And there's his dog. This is my brother Tim, the logger, and my uncle Dan. 